imagine is somewhat 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. At night you're in your tent and you hear noises and commotion coming from outside. So naturally you leave your tent to see what's going on. And you see people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain in the hundreds and thousands. Looking around, bewildered yourself, confused, your eyes fall onto the face of Imam Hussain There and then you decide you're going to stay, knowing full well what's going to happen to you when the morning comes. So now it's the day of Ashura. You've now become the 73rd companion of Imam Hussain and imagine walking up to him to offer your services and he gives you a choice in how you want to serve him on that day. Which aspect or what part of it would you want to serve? It's a really fundamental and a good question. Um, you know, when you think about it, Everyone wants to be part of the companions. That's why they say Fuzdawar Abdul Kaaba can be as part of it, you know, to be obviously martyred and to be a winner. I'd like my services to be pointed in a direction where it could be valued the most, you know. If that was to mean Al Qasim Salamullah lasting for at least 10 minutes longer, you know, or Abul Fadl to spend maybe 10 minutes longer with Abu Abdullah, then that's my services provided there, you know, if I was to be martyred before them. Just so Imam Hussein could see them, you know, just for a bit longer, then I believe my services would, be, would have been like, totally used. Why do you think it's important he gets to spend 10 more minutes with them in particular? Because, for example, Abu Fatih al uh, we all knew during his whole lifetime he never called Al Hussein as his brother, as only Molai, my master. And on the day of Ashura, it was finally that day where they recognized they both said the word brother, if I'm not mistaken. And that's where you see how respectable Abu Fadl is. No matter how big he is, you know, in our eyes or anything, he still had the limits. You know, towards Imam Hussein Salaam Allah So that's why. Maybe a bit 10 minutes longer for them to recognize each other as brothers, even though they did before that. But for Abu al you know, to sink it in just a bit longer, you know, would have been great. Now imagine you've had a long day at work or uni, you come home, you open your house door, you walk in, you see your family frantic. Everyone's running around the house in different directions. Someone's bringing fruit, someone's bringing sweets, someone's trying to make tea, someone's trying to clean up other people's messes. And you grab one of them and you ask them, what's going on, have we got guests? And they reply to you, we haven't got guests, you've got a guest, someone's come to see you. So you say, okay, who is it? Where are they? When did they come? The natural questions that you would ask. And they say they're waiting for you in the living room. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk in, and you see sitting on one of the chairs is Imam Hussain In that moment, what would you have to say to him? What would you like to hear from him to you? I know something I'd say that the sacrifice he provided was like none other and was a life lesson to every single human being prior to the event and after the event to be honest with you because everyone has learned from that event no matter who you are we believe in you know all the usual good stuff um, 
talking about not being segregated or anything like that, but um, just a mere thank you, you know, out of what he's done and out of what we've learnt and how we've lived our lives, you know. Yeah. What would you want him to say to you? What would make you the most happy to hear from his holy mouth? Would you want him to say, for example, I've accepted you as a servant? Or would you want him to say, for example, I'm happy with your actions? Would you want him to... What would, what, what would make you happy? What would you want to hear? I, to be honest with you, the one thing that popped into my head, I wouldn't want any of that. I know what I'd want, to be honest with you. I would want him to say that once you are in your grave and Imam al-Mahdi does reappear, I will be the one to resurrect you and give you your soul back. That would be fabulous. So at the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago, I asked you about a day where you know some things about, you know some of the events that occurred, some things that happened, and it might be easy with that hindsight to be able to say, for example, if I was there, I would have stopped this, or I would have prolonged that, or I would have aided in this manner, knowing these things have actually happened. But a lot of us often forget that our 12th Imam is still with us. And even though he's not with us physically, that's in a way him giving us a choice in how we want to serve him. So what do you think the 12th Imam feels about you as a follower? What do you think he expects from you? How do you think you've served him till now? You know, I believe I believe that every action is, is accounted for, you know, you are accountable for every action. I believe in this day and age, this generation that we live in, our actions have not been great, you know. Keeping up with the technology is fairly easy nowadays and obviously that hinders everything, that hinders your religion, that hinders mindset, uh, physical abilities, mental uh, capabilities. Uh, and I think with all, due, with all due respect, I think he'd be, inshallah I'm wrong, but I think he'd be disappointed, to be completely honest with you. You know, and I do hope one day that, not even hope one day, I hope some, some time, you know, and if it's a few minutes from now, it would be good, but maybe get a grasp. On my life, I speak for myself before I speak for anyone else. Maybe I'd like to get a grasp on my life, you know, and, um, and do the things that, the Imma have casted upon you in their books and in their ahadith so that we may learn because what's left is what Imam Mahdi wants, you know? What they've left, how our actions should be in all that stuff that we should be like uh, the Imams, pray like them, fast like them, talk like them, walk like them. That's when he'd be, that's when he'd appreciate us, you know? Not appreciate us, stuff for Allah, but um, be a happy with us, you know? That's what I think. <laughs>